Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. We start our Aero-V engine assembly with the crankshaft. Sonics offers pre-assembled cranks as an option when you order your engine kit, but many builders like to go ahead and assemble their crank themselves. It's really not that hard. This is our custom-made Aero-V crankshaft. It is uh, unique to the Aero-V engine. It's not a stock Volkswagen crank. It is our uh, unique crankshaft. When you get the crank, it's going to come in a box. Uh, wrapped in plastic with a, a coating of oil on it and what you'll do is you'll take it out of the bag and clean that excess oil off and get it nice and clean and there's some other prep work you'll want to do. You'll notice on the crank throws there's some little plugs and those plugs are where they drilled in to drill the oil galleys. What we're going to do is we're going to take those plugs out and we're going to clean out those oil galleys. So it's just an Allen wrench, a little Allen plug. You can thread those plugs out and then wash those oil galleys out with some mineral spirits and use some compressed air to blow them out and get those nice and clean make sure there's no debris in them. When you reinstall the plug, you'll want to put some medium strength Loctite on the plug. That's the blue Loctite and you'll put some on there and then thread those plugs back in and then just thread them down until they tighten up and that'll take care of your oil galleys and you'll be all set. Also make sure that your keyways on the prop hub end of the crank are clean. There's no uh, machining debris or anything else in there because we'll want to have that nice and clean when we put our uh, woodruff keys in there make sure they seat down in there nice and full. So clean that all up and get that all ready to go and then your crank is ready for assembly. I have here laid out all of the parts that we're going to assemble on the prop hub end of the crank and we'll start with our forward main bearing. Now this bearing is uh, put on the crank first before we put on any of the other parts. We'll uh, coat the inside of this bearing with some uh, white lithium grease or your other favorite engine assembly lube before we put it on. We have to orient the bearing properly. There's this uh, a little indentation here that goes on to a stud in the engine case, a dowel pin, and we'll make sure that that uh, hole for the dowel pin is closest to the crank throw. So it'll go on in this fashion uh, like I'm holding it here. That'll go on first, then our timing gear goes on. Now these are uh, steel timing gears. They are an interference fit so that you can't just push them on. You actually have to heat this gear up in the oven and you want to cool your crank in the refrigerator or in the freezer to make sure that the gear expands and the crank shrinks a little bit so that you can install the gear. We put these in the oven at 450 degrees for a couple of hours. Uh, the longer the better until it gets to be a nice deep blue. This crank gear will actually change color to a nice dark blue color when it's good and hot so you'll know that it's uh, it's in there. You want to make sure you get it on there in the proper orientation. You'll see on this side of the gear, this is the front of the gear. This side goes towards the prop hub. It has two little dots which are your timing marks. Those little dots line up with a single dot on your cam gear and that makes sure that your crank and your cam are properly timed for your valve timing. So the, the uh, timing marks go on the outside away from the crank throw towards the prop hub. The timing marks are directly across from our keyway for our woodruff key. Now if you look at the back of the gear, it's easy to tell the back of the gear because this chamfer on the inner uh, bore is much larger on the back of the gear which goes towards the crank throw uh, than the chamfer on the front of the gear which is just very small. So timing gear uh, marks on the front and the large chamfer on the back. Now this gear is going to be heated in the oven so when you're handling that gear you're going to need some good uh, quality uh, high temperature gloves. Uh, these are welding gloves. Uh, you might want to get uh, oven mitts or whatever you uh, have available to make sure that you're not going to burn yourself when you're handling that hot gear. Crank's going to be cold, the gear is going to be hot. There is a keyway, I talked about that. This is the Woodruff key, very small little square key. 
When you get these, they're kind of sharp edged, and what I like to do is take them on a real fine grinding wheel or a Scotch Brite wheel and just take the, the edge off of them. You can do it with a file if you have to. Just take all of the sharp edges off, make sure there's no burrs or any other uh, obstructions that'll keep that key from seating down into the keyway on the crank or hanging up on the gear when you put your gear on. Everything you can do to make that gear slide on easier is a good idea. Once you get the gear on, there's a snap ring that goes on uh, that retains the gear. And so that snap ring will be put on after we slide the gear on the uh, uh, crankshaft. Beyond the snap ring is your front bearing, the smaller bearing that goes on the outer uh, uh, shaft of the crank here. That'll go on next. Again, we're going to lubricate the inside of this with some uh, white lithium grease or some engine assembly lube. And also this one will get oriented with the dowel pin recess towards the crankshaft and away from the prop hub. So we'll make sure we orient that correctly uh, on our crankshaft. There's a little oil hole right here. Uh, that hole is in the uh, bearing when you get it. What we like to do is just enlarge that hole a little bit. We just take a 1 8 inch drill, drill that out, and then remove all the burrs from both the outside and the inside. Make sure it gives you a little bit more oil feed to that front bearing uh, in our application. So it would run without that, but we'll just give it a little extra oil by opening up that uh, oil galley just a little bit. Once the bearing is on there, we put our oil slinger ring on there, which is just this little stamped metal ring that'll go on uh, before we put our prop hub on. So that'll go on next. There's a woodruff key as well for the prop hub. You'll notice it's a different shape. It's longer and narrower than the uh, timing gear woodruff key. Again, I'll take this on my scotch Bright wheel and just take all the rough edges off, make sure there's no burrs or anything that'll hang up, make sure our uh, hub will slide on there without any problem. And then, of course, the hub itself will go on. Again, this hub is going to be heated in the oven. It's going to be 450 degrees or so. We're going to leave it in the oven for a couple hours or three hours or so, make sure it's good and heat soaked. So you'll use your, uh, your welding gloves or your oven mitts or whatever you're going to use to handle that because it's going to be good and hot when it comes out of the oven. So that'll uh, expand that hub out so that it'll go on your prop shaft or your uh, crankshaft without any problem. Once you put the hub on, we've got our bolt and our big washer. That's going to go right in through the center of the hub and uh, thread into our crankshaft. When we push the hub on, we're going to immediately drive this bolt in there with a uh, air impact wrench and tighten it right down and make sure that hub is all the way on the crank as far as it'll go. Once the crank cools or the prop hub cools and everything normalizes, we'll then remove that bolt later on, put a little Loctite on there, and then torque that bolt to its proper torque value. So it'll pull that hub down on there tight, and then we'll retorque it after the crank is cool. So those are the parts we're going to use to assemble our crank. Uh, we'll do it in two steps. Our first step will be putting the uh, timing gear on. We'll get that on there and get our snap ring on. And then as a second step, we'll put our prop hub on and all the rest of these parts, and our crank will be assembled.